What's up guys, David here, and this is the Galaxy S8 Plus that I think we all wanted to see. It's not your typical Galaxy S8 Plus. You can't go to your local store to buy it. You can't even go to Samsung's website to buy it because it's only available in select countries like Korea. And if you're thinking about importing, this thing is expensive. Now, luckily, our sponsor at Graphics Talk covered the cost of this device, allowing us to bring you this speed test. So big thanks to them. So in the spirit of Graphics Talk's creator to creator initiative, let's take a look at a spec sheet that I made using my Graphics Talk subscription. So here are the specs on your normal Galaxy S8, which are definitely nothing to scoff at. But on this special Galaxy S8 Plus, Samsung took it to the next level, bumping the RAM up to six gigabytes and doubling the internal storage up to 128 gigabytes. So I'm excited for this speed test. Now, if you guys like what you saw in that spec sheet with the awesome graphics and vectors that I used, check out Graphics Talk. They're offering a free seven day trial at the link below where you get unlimited access to 350,000 plus graphics, photos, vectors, and more. Graphics Talk is a great tool for anyone interested in DIY, graphic design, arts, or any kind of other project. I've been using them for years, so check them out. Create create something special and share it with hashtag creator to creator. All right, let's see if those beautifully presented specs actually translate into better real world performance. Let's get right into it. All right, so on your left, you have the Galaxy S8 Plus with six gigabytes of RAM, and on your right is your average Galaxy S8 with four. Both phones here are being powered by the same Exynos 8895, and both phones are using the faster UFS 2.1 storage. So I don't really expect there to be much of a difference here in the first lap. The only thing that may play a role is the higher 128 gigabyte storage that comes with the six gigabyte model, which in theory should have slightly faster read and write speeds, but then again, I don't know if it's going to make much of a difference here as the faster read and write speeds may only be noticeable during larger file transfers. So really, what I'm interested in is not what happens here in the first lap, but what happens in the second lap where the RAM management on both of these phones will be put to the test. And if you've seen any of our speed tests, whether it was with a Galaxy S7 or with the Galaxy S8, you know that Samsung phones aren't the best when it comes to keeping apps open and ready to go in the background. Time and time again, we've seen similarly spec Android phones with the same four gigabytes of RAM do a better job at keeping apps open. So what I want to see is if the additional two gigabytes or 50% of extra RAM is enough to solve Samsung's relatively weak RAM management. So we'll go ahead and fast forward to the second lap, which is what we've all been waiting to see anyways, where like I suspected, the phones finish only two seconds apart. So below the three second margin of error, making that first lap pretty much a tie. Okay, so this is where things will get interesting. Will the six gigabytes of RAM be enough for the S8 Plus to keep all of the apps open? So far, so good. But the big test here is Subway Surfers. And yes, the six gigabyte packing S8 Plus keeps the game open as it does Lapsits, Photoshop, Snapchat, and Facebook, allowing it to run away with the lead as the four gigabytes of RAM on the regular S8 just wasn't enough to keep all the apps open. It had to reload both Subway Surfers and the Photoshop app here, allowing the beefed up S8 Plus to finish first with a total time of two minutes and 10 seconds while the regular S8 with its four gigabytes of RAM just looks inadequate in comparison with it having to reload most of the remaining apps, pushing it even further behind with it finally completing the second lap with a total time of two minutes and 31 seconds, making the six gigabytes S8 Plus possibly the fastest Android smartphone in the world. Anyways, that is it for me in this video. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.